Hail Deputy. Well, I just got out of the hospital, guys. Um, I was three days in the hospital. I, uh, you know, as I've said in previous videos, I've been having all this pain. And, um, so I made a doctor's appointment. Because everybody kept saying, go see a doctor, go see a doctor. So I did. With a primary care physician. And I remember sitting in the waiting room. I was just in agony of pain. And, um, had to wait 30 minutes. Um, my appointment was at 2 in the afternoon. And I didn't see the doctor until 2.30. And the first thing that they did, um, was an EKG. And my EKG was abnormal. And as soon as I got dressed, I mean, before I even got dressed, the doctor is like wanting to come in the room. And, uh, you know, the tech is like, yeah, she's almost dressed. She's almost dressed. So he finally, he waited out in the hall. And as soon as I was dressed, you know, he comes in. And um, <clears throat> he's like... Uh, um, well, I guess he, he probably looked at EKG results before he came in. So, anybody, it was really, really soon after I'd gotten dressed. And he's like, you know, your EKG is abnormal. And he said, um, he said, I've called an ambulance to take you to the hospital. And I'm just like, huh? Cause I didn't come in there to have my heart checked, but I guess he thought the symptoms were of a heart attack or something. Because, you know, the pain going down my left arm. So, the ambulance came, and uh, they, I got on the stretch, you know, the, the ambulance people were kind of confused because, you know, I wasn't, like, passed out on the floor or anything. I was seemingly fine just sitting there on the exam table and I sat down on the stretcher and they took me out to the ambulance and um, they well let me back up a minute so the first thing before I even had the EKG they took my blood pressure and it was like 132 over 72 so that's you know pretty borderline I mean I mean that's fairly normal it's maybe a little bit higher than normal but it's not really bad and then as soon as I got into the ambulance they took my blood pressure again and it skyrocketed up to like 175 over something or other because of the stress basically um and they rushed me well actually they didn't rush they didn't turn on the sirens and in fact we probably sat in the parking lot for at least five minutes before they started rolling you know they put an IV in me they took uh, I think they might have drawn blood um, I'm not sure what all and I guess it's easier to do those things if the the vehicles not moving it was my first ride in the ambulance and um, and hopefully it's my last ride in the ambulance <laughs> Uh, so I got to the emergency room and was put into a room and kept telling my story about how, you know, I was having this pain and I went to see the doctor and he did an EKG and it was abnormal and so he called and, uh, so I was, the room they put me in, I was in there for like nine hours. It was about midnight before they admitted me to a room upstairs um, and they kept offering me morphine and I'm like thinking well I'm going to be out of here before long and I don't want to have morphine I thought morphine might put me to sleep it would impair me driving so I declined the morphine and I says well if you're going to admit me to the hospital then I'll have the morphine then um, so before they even wheeled me up, they gave me a shot of morphine. And while I was there in 
the ER, you know, they were monitoring my heart and I could look at the screen and see what my heart was doing. And it was kind of scary because, you know, how in movies, when they show you the heart, it's just like these spiky bars going up and down, right? Spiky, spiky, spiky. Well, mine was not spiky. At least not all the time. Sometimes it was just kind of wavy. Like barely doing anything but still going you know it, there were no spikes it, it was just wavy like a wavy line instead of a spiky line which was scary to me and there were a couple of times where I could see that my heart had skipped a beat because because uh, you know sometimes it was spiky but where there would be a, should be a spike there would just be a straight line so I knew that that meant a skipped heartbeat. So that was scary. And um, so, you know, they all just were ignoring pretty much my back pain and just treating this as a heart issue, which clearly I had something going on with my heart because uh, I saw the monitor. Um, so, they put me in the hospital room and, uh, you know, they did x-rays and then at some point they did like an echocardiogram. They gave me all these tests. There was a CT scan um, when I was still in the emergency room on a stretcher um they wheeled me down to get a ct scan which was um not very pleasant but anyway so i finally got um into a, a room it was a private room and um they said they were going to hold me for observation and they you know i had told um, the primary care physician that my doctor uh, that I had been seeing uh, was this cardiologist and so evidently they called him called him this was on like day two and so I guess he was too busy to come to the hospital himself so he sent his physician assistant and he talked to me and at that point, they started giving me uh, nitroglycerin when I would complain of pain. They wouldn't give me any morphine. They would give me Tylenol and nitroglycerin. Um, and um, I'm not sure if the nitroglycerin helped. I mean, it might have helped a little bit. Um, but a lot of my pain was my back and my arm and not really chest pain, not really heart pains. And, you know, but like a nurse was like, well, the back pain, that's probably residual heart pain. You know, and the pain down your arm is residual heart pain. I'm like, okay, well, you guys are supposed to know what all this stuff is about, so maybe that's the case. But I wasn't entirely convinced. And they just continued to treat me and observe me and give me tests and um, they tried giving me this other drug and um, it was like ISO something or other that was supposed to be for heart pain and um, so then on the third day, um, the physician, I told the physician's assistant that, you know, my main complaint was his back pain. And I thought, you know, well, maybe it might be shingles. And then he just, he looked at my back. He didn't see a rash because I don't have a rash. And, but you can have shingles without a rash. Um, nobody was really treating me for the back pain and so but at least I was able 
to talk to him because most of the time the doctors I really wasn't able to talk to them for any length of time because they I would just say a few things they would nod and walk away so I didn't really get to have a decent conversation with anyone uh, knowledgeable until I was able to talk to the physician's assistant. So anyway, on the third day, the cardiologist himself finally comes to see me around two in the afternoon. And uh, so he talked to me and I showed him my back and he was like pressing on my shoulder and my back and I'm like, well, it doesn't really hurt on the shoulder, it hurts more in the scapula. And he's like pressing on there and at that time it didn't really hurt when he was pressing because I'd been resting up and uh, and I was on painkillers and you know which at that point it would pretty much all they were giving me was Tylenol. Um, so I mean it hurts more if I'm doing things, if I'm moving around, if I use the keyboard, if I use the mouse, if I walk, if I cook a meal, if I use the bathroom. If I drive anywhere, that's when the pain really starts in. Um, and if I just don't move, it's uh, either not painful or is not as much pain. Because sometimes it will hurt even if I'm not moving. Especially if I'm not on any sort of pain reliever. So, um, I mean, at the moment, I'm seeing this in my chair. I'm not moving my arm and I'm on ibuprofen so I'm not really feeling the pain right now but it, every time I get up and do something like go to the bathroom or try to get something to eat then the pain sets in and it's just very very severe pain so the doctor finally says well I'm going to release you from the hospital and refer you to an or orthopedic doctor I don't know if he said orthopedic surgeon I kind of think that he might have said orthopedic surgeon but anyway, so ortho, he said the word orthopedic. So that's my next step is I have to go see this orthopedic person. And uh, we'll see what they have to say. Um, so I'm going to try to get to see them this coming up week because the holidays are coming up and, you know, it's going to be... Uh, no, you know, nobody's going to want to see me on Christmas. <laughs> so, um, so I'm back home finally and I'm on ibuprofen and I'm still looking for answers and I'm still looking for pain relief. Of course, now I have a new fresh ailment because right before they released me from the hospital, I started having low back pain that was excruciating so that I could hardly move. I could hardly walk. Um, and bending was pretty much impossible uh, without severe pain. Today it has eased up a little bit. So I'm glad of that. Tomorrow I'm going to go see the chiropractor and maybe she can relieve some of the pain. And I'll try to see this uh, orthopedic guy um in the next week so that's where I'm I'm at now I pretty much cannot play any games all I do is either lay in the bed or sit in the chair and I can't move so I I know that eventually I will get over this I just don't know when and then I can get back to killing zombies. We'll see you later, guys. Bye.